One of the major new feature additions to 3D Coat 2021 was a brand new brush engine for surface mode. This new brush engine provided much more control and customization of the brushes than was previously available. This includes adding modifiers to your brushes. You can choose the different type of effects you want to apply to a brush and even stack them in a sequential order of operation. You might be asking at this point, does this involve voxel sculpting too? Well, as of 3D Coat 2022, it certainly does. This is a huge leap forward for voxel sculpting, and we are going to focus on the new brush engine in this video. It incorporates much of the functionality of the Surface Brush Engine, except it does not have the number of modifiers Surface Mode has. But that's okay, because when you are sculpting in voxel mode, it's a hybrid environment, meaning both voxel and surface brushes are available, and they can be used interchangeably. In the sculpt tree panel, a V indicates your layer is in voxel mode and an S indicates it's in surface mode. You can see the surface brushes in surface mode are the very same ones available in voxel mode right beneath the voxel brushes. Before I go into the details of the new brush engine, I first want to take a few moments for the sake of new users to explain exactly what voxels are and how it differs from surface mode. To get started, I will use an image reference from the image picker, which serves to illustrate how voxels work. They are volumetric pixels in 3D space, which are either solid or empty. You can also find the same concept at work in visual effects tool sets as well. What I have here is a surface mesh. I am going to switch to a voxel copy by selecting this layer, and I'm going to isolate it by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the visibility icon. As I zoom in and hit the W key, you will notice there are no volumetric cubes displayed, but what you do see is an outer mesh which is dynamic, meaning it adapts on the fly to whatever changes you make to the volume. If you select a surface brush while your sculpt tree layer is in voxel mode, 3D Coat will temporarily suspend this voxelization process at which point you are now able to simply push and pull vertices in 3D space like you would if you were working on a surface mesh. Although this mesh structure is a bit different than a surface mesh, you still have the same level of performance, brush feel, and the very same engine that's available in surface mode. This includes sculpt layer functionality when using the surface brushes. However, one word of warning, once you switch to a voxel brush thereafter, 3D Coat will revoxelize the object, therefore the sculpt layer information will be baked in its current state, which simply means the user will not be able to go back and edit the work that they did with the surface brushes. To clarify this point even further, it's a bit like working in Photoshop if you were to merge down all of your layers. With as stated, we have a video that does show how to avoid losing sculpt layer information, and I will provide a link to it in the description. What I'm doing here is showing one major difference between the surface brushes, which do allow polygonal stretching, as you can see, whereas working with a voxel brush, polygonal stretching is never an issue. Even though surface mode does have some tools that mitigate polygonal stretching, it's still not as carefree as working with voxels. So let me increase the depth level. Another distinguishing aspect of voxel sculpting is that you can literally sculpt through a form on your model Whereas polygonal sculpting is incapable of this because it's merely pushing and pulling vertices in space and that's all it really can do unless you apply some type of a boolean operation. So with a voxel brush I am now holding down the control key while I press on my stylus in order to indent. And now it's reached the other side of the volume creating a natural hole. Another voxel tool that outshines its surface mode counterpart is the fill tool. When you have a small to medium sized indentation or crevice in the mesh thin, the surface fill tool is perfectly sufficient. However, when there is a large opening or gap in the mesh, you will likely prefer the voxel fill tool. 
One important side note about the Voxafil tool is that it has received a nice performance increase due to OpenGL acceleration and you may notice in the geometry menu, CUDA support is no longer an available option. It has been discontinued primarily because it has required the use of an NVIDIA card exclusively. OpenGL, on the other hand, is graphic card agnostic. You can use both AMD or NVIDIA cards in order to take advantage of this new GPU acceleration. In this example, I'm now going to use the Surface version of the Fill tool. Straight away, you can tell it really struggles with this type of an opening. Now I will undo a few times. Let's now turn our attention to Surface mode. What I have here is a mesh that is currently in Surface mode. I will go ahead and select it, and then I can isolate it by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the visibility icon. And I think I will choose the rapid brush. Let me start with wireframe turned on so that you can see as I brush that when your layer is in surface mode, all the brushes have dynamic subdivision functionality built in. And just as you could with the live clay brushes in 3D Coat 4.9 and earlier, you can adjust the detail level in the tool options panel. And of course, the higher the value, the higher the detail level will be. And with that same value, a larger brush radius will yield less detail than a smaller brush radius. If you merely want to dynamically subdivide without doing any sculpting simultaneously, there are a couple different ways to approach it. The first way is to use the subdivide tool. This allows the user to brush select an area that they want to subdivide and then hit the apply button as many times as they want to subdivide. The other approach is to simply right click and drag all the way down till you see your profile flatten out. Your depth value will be at zero. And that means you are now just tessellating. No depth is being applied. This dynamic subdivision allows the user to not only locally apply greater levels of sculpting detail, but also texture resolution as well. And this includes smart materials. The more vertices you have, the greater levels of resolution you have because Vertex Paint stores all the color, depth, glossiness, and metalness information on the vertices. I will increase the depth level a bit so I can do some sculpting, and I'll turn off Auto Subdivide. I'll hit the W key to turn wireframe off. Another advantage of surface mode is that it enables the user to utilize sculpt layer information. As you can see here, I'm able to scrub the depth slider to modulate the depth value at any given point. I'm also able to utilize tools such as Magnify SL, which will allow the user to increase or decrease the depth level under your brush. Then you have Erase SL also that allows you to just simply erase scope layer information locally. All right, now that voxel and surface modes have been briefly explained, we are ready to explore the new voxel brush engine. I will unhide this voxel copy and alt click the visibility icon to isolate it. Then I can right click on the layer and I can choose to snap it to the ground. Now let's turn our attention to the upper left hand corner of the UI to the new brush clay engine. This is where all the new work has largely been concentrated in voxel mode. Let's now start with a base clay brush, which as the name implies is a base level brush for the user to create their own custom brushes. Let's see how that's done. I'm going to right click and I will choose to duplicate this brush. 3D Coat immediately presents me with a text box to rename it. We now have our newly created custom brush. At some later point, I can always right mouse button click and hide the tool, or I can bring it back up at a later time by right clicking and choosing show all tools in section. I can hide all the parameters in the tool options panel or I can expand them. 
The brushstroke and miscellaneous settings sections are much like using the brush options panel, but you'll notice 3D Coat informs you that it's placing all these controls in the tool options panel instead. So you can paint with dabs, you can adjust the spacing of your brush alpha along the stroke, you can choose to rotate the alpha along the brush stroke, you can adjust the rotation. You can enable steady stroke here, as well as adjust the length of the interpolation, which smooths out your stroke. Then in miscellaneous settings, the buildup speed is relatively self-explanatory. In order to exaggerate the effect a bit, I will increase that to about five. And do a quick test with my brush. Buildup is where you press down and hold while you continue brushing over the same surface. Let's now take a quick look at Jitter. When checking Use Jitter, it will open up all the parameters, so that means it's context sensitive. And you can jitter position, rotation, radius, depth, forward tilt, left and right tilt, random flip X and Y. So I've already made some adjustments here. So we'll have this brush alpha. Give it an extrusion boost. So I'll undo. I'll try a different brush alpha. One like this. If you noticed a little bit of partial viewport shifting around the brush, that's because incremental render is switched on so it's rendering on the fly, but sometimes every once in a while it can lag behind just a little bit. So to disable that, simply uncheck incremental render. It's supposed to give the user a little bit better performance. But if you have a relatively robust system, you probably don't need it. I will undo a few times. The next thing we want to look at is sampling. And this one is not so easy to demonstrate it to where you can see a dramatic difference, but I will try nonetheless. The position sampling, when you hover over that, it explains the sampling radius to pick the average position of the brush. So the radius beneath your brush is what it's talking about. Lower values means it's going to sample a smaller area within the brush radius. Instead of sampling from the entire brush radius, it's going to be more toward the center. Normal sampling is somewhat similar in this regard, but I find it's a bit easier to demonstrate, so I will go ahead and start now. If you hover your cursor over the parameter field, you'll notice it has a more in-depth explanation in the tooltip. Basically, what's going to happen is with lower values, 3D Coat will follow more closely the contours of the surface beneath the brush, whereas a larger value gives it a broader range to average normals, so it will be a bit smoother. I'll undo and try it again with a different plane offset value. into the negative territory. The plane offset is essentially where the center of your brush radius is located. Negative values means it's going to be effectively starting beneath the surface. A zero value will be right at the surface, whereas positive values will be above the surface. With the plane offset value changed, I will now try and demonstrate this again with a high normal sampling value. Now when I go down to 5%, you can see how it is trying hard to follow the contours of these scales. So I'll set that back to 100. And you can choose the pick trajectory type from surface or average vertex position. All right, the smooth brush mode means that the brush is going to try and operate as closely as possible to the way it does in surface mode. 
I will uncheck that and try to create a sample. But first I'm going to adjust the extrusion strength a bit. Okay, and then in the smooth brush mode. Yeah. Let me undo a bit. And I'm going to reduce the extrusion amount. Yeah, it's much smoother than without. Also, with that checked, the extrusion mode is omnidirectional by default, but you can have it lift only or indent only as well. Okay. So with plane offset, you can just give it a simple plane offset value, or you can make it based on brush pressure. With very light pressure, you could actually go into the negative if you want. And with heavier pressure, you could actually go into the opposite direction. So now it will be modulated along your brush stroke based on pin pressure. So I will try to apply light pressure and then increase it. The overall depth when working with this new brush engine is going to be far more nuanced and it has more controls. It's no longer a matter of simply adjusting the depth value in the toolbar. The extrusion strength is like an extrusion boost. Degree is essentially the strength of the modifier. The overall depth value then is most prominently affected by the plane offset value. Overall degree, when you check this, it should appear here even when you hide the brush parameters. It lets you modulate all the modifiers simultaneously. In other words, it increases or decreases each one collectively. But when you uncheck that, then it will not be visible up here. Pen depth, it takes into account your pen depth if this is checked, and it is by default. If I uncheck Use Current Alpha, 3D Coat is going to utilize its own brush alpha or profile. You can actually modify this to your liking. This time I will go ahead and check Use Current Alpha. Then I will pick a unique brush alpha. Now when I click on the gear icon, it will show me exactly what that will look like on the surface of the model. Now the modifiers at the bottom are very simple and straightforward. You just check one when you plan to use it, adjust the value accordingly, and that's it. Whereas in surface mode, they're a bit more extensive with a few more options. And with that, I will stop the video here and pick up in the next one where I'm going to demonstrate the various default voxel clay engine brushes. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.